I'm here at WorkbenchCon in Atlanta, Georgia. This is an annual conference for woodworkers, content creators, or just fans of woodworking and content creation. If you want to meet uh, your favorite YouTuber or Instagrammer who does woodworking content, this is the place to be. We're gonna go in and check out some really cool tools that are here and are on display. Let's go check it out. I'm here with Connor with Crocodile Cloth. Tell me about this. Yeah, so Crocodile Cloth is gonna be the biggest, baddest, toughest cleaning wipe on the planet. Uh, you're not gonna find one bigger, better, or wetter. All of our products are gonna be 10 by 15. So absolutely massive cleaning product. So this is for your hands? Hands, tools, surfaces, uh, and really any kind of mess you make. So okay. today we got a couple different things. We got some swamp buckets, oil and grease in that bucket, our mystery bucket, which has some household uh, supplies in there, and then a bucket of acrylic paint. So we've been having people stick their hands in there, find a little baby crocodile, and then clean their hands with crocodile cloth. Do it for me. All right, let's do it. I'll go in the mystery swamp bucket here. So as you can see, uh, some household stickiness in there and a little baby crocodile. So from there, one wipe, we'll go ahead and start taking all that off. And you'll be able to shake my hand again afterward and not feel any stickiness, griminess, or anything left behind from the cloth. I heard you tell the other guy that it has some aloe in there too, so you don't dry your hands out and all that good stuff. Correct, yeah, about 97% water, we put some aloe in there. Um, so if you're used to using harsher chemicals that dry you out, Crocodile Cloth won't do that. Where do you buy these at? So you can buy these nationwide at Home Depot. Uh, we got an Amazon storefront as well, also in your mom and pop hardware stores, Napa, Ferguson, but Home Depot and, and Amazon are your two best places. I'll link to them on Amazon. Right? Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you, man. Thank you. Hey, it's yeah, clean. see, told you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, we're here with Bill from Bow Products. Y'all know I'm a fan of Bow Products. Yep, good to see you. Finally get to meet you in person. So tell us about the uh, Bow Extender Fence. I'm a huge fan of this thing. Yeah, absolutely. So we developed this uh, for safety and control when you're dealing with small table surfaces. So imagine cutting a board on just a six inch entrance into the blade. You want that board, you want a good cut, you want good feed control. The extender fence allows you to extend the table surface, in feed and out feed, and it also allows you to add these feather boards so you have good control over the feed and good cuts. So you just clamp this right onto your existing fence, and now look at the difference in control when you feed this board using this system. I've got good in feed support, I've got the board coming in real smooth and square to the fence coming all the way through, all the way through the cut. And then after the cut, this fence feather board works with the fence to actually hold it with the feed support holds a board. So I've got out feed support as well and a good cut. Yeah, that's what I loved about it was the out feed mainly. Like yeah. that out feed support on a small table saw like this, you're constantly dropping things over the side. So I love that and it fits on small saws like this. And with these uh, clamps here, we have these milled slots that allow you to position the fence further back if you just want it out feed. Right. Or you can position it forward if you want in feed. And these feed supports have a little cutout down here if you wanted to cut a heavier board. Yeah. You can do that Put as well. Get a leg on there. Get a leg. Exactly. I also notice this also fits on multiple saws, not just job site saws, right? That's right, yeah. Band saws, really any small table surface. But you can put it on a full cabinet saw. Yep. You may not want the feed supports. You can just use the fence itself. Right. So all the different fences. Nice. You also have push sticks over there. Yeah, yeah, the push sticks. We have the two sizes. Again, we're featuring the EVA tips. And the reason this is important is it's our belief that you really never want to get plastic around a blade. Right. Right? So the EVA, for if it accidentally contacted the blade, would just cut right through. And these tips are replaceable and reversible. Nice. So it's all safety. And if you don't like our push stick, you can make your own. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I so like you just that. take it out and yeah. make your own. That's really cool. A couple different versions of that. Oh, I like this one. Yeah. <laughs> that's all right. So that's our push sticks. Nice. Finish so the cut there. You also have something something new coming out. The, with the Yeah, I want to show you this. So this is our new low profile clamping system. And we're really excited about this. And here's what makes it different. You can take this clamp and mount it into a T-track, or you can fit it into a dog hole. It's all part of the kit. And if you want, you can change out that tip with this and screw it right into a workbench and 
perhaps the most exciting thing is it'll work on CNC's. Nice. So you can change out this longer nut and go down below the spoil board and catch the T-track and you have low profile clamping from the side. So that's the first aspect of it. The second aspect is, and two clamps, two fences, yeah. is that you have all these interchangeable tips. So here's our EVA tip. Yep. And that is interchangeable EVA, which Bone is known for. But that'll catch corners or soft woods and it's forgiving yeah. under pressure. Or you can have this super low profile. If I want to work this edge, I've got this low profile tip. I've got one for corners mm -hmm. right here so I can get a corner. Or this guy will bite into about anything here. Oh yeah. So I got that one. Now to demonstrate the travel that this rides down the slope, I'll put this board in and I'll show you, I'll show you this. So I'm gonna retract it. So with this board, just coming down, you can see the movement and how that's grabbing that board and pushing it down. See the travel? Yep. As it goes down. So you literally get about three eighths of an inch of travel down that slope. That's more than you need. Yeah. And we patented these dogs as well. We're gonna come out with a set of, a uh, pack of dogs we call it, with four dogs. And here's why these are special. You can act, they expand, the T-bolt fits in there, and they expand as you compress it, and they'll grab very short dog holes, yeah. or, the, or the deeper ones, or shallow ones. So if, if I just come in from the top, and I come down, and I can tighten that from the top. I don't have to go under the table. Right. I can get that all done from the top. So that's really clever, and we're going to sell those separately as well. Awesome. No, that was awesome, Mr. Beal. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank appreciate you, buddy, it. and appreciate you yes, so sir. much. This is, this is what's new, and a lot more accessories coming out for everything. Great. So. Thank you. I'm here with Andy with MagSwitch. Andy? Thanks for coming by. Thank you. Tell us what you got. The core technology MagSwitch puts to use for woodworking and welding is a magnet that turns on and off. No batteries or anything. Flip the switch, turns on, and now it's off. There's an incredible amount you can do with that. We've got power feeder mounts. This is a, four, a six magnet array, so that's strong enough to mount a power feeder, all the way down to feather boards for the table saw, drill press fences, welding setup tools, drill press vise mount. We've got tools for fabrication, pulling pieces off of plasma ah, tables. That's pretty cool. We've got if you're lifting up a thousand pieces a day, don't want to wear out your wrist, this turns on and off with a magnet or with a uh, with an electric switch. All kinds of cool stuff. That's pretty cool. I have the bandsaw fence and I'll say it is fantastic. I love that thing. Excellent. What's the bigger one? Is it for a bigger bandsaw? Uh, actually for a drill press. So the oh, V in press. the middle is so you can drill in real close and not hit the fence with the chuck. Yeah. The stop block can work. Even if you have a uh, piece of uh, plywood down down underneath it, because it just attaches with the magnet to the fence body. And then is that a vertical fe uh, featherboard over there? Vertical featherboard mounts to the center of a Beesmeyer style fence, so you can have downward yeah, force on a uh, dado cut, so it's consistent depth or thin plywood, so it doesn't shatter. Awesome. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm here with Mark with Oneida Air Systems. Yes. So y'all have a brand new product. Yes, we do. All right. So I think this is perfect for the garage or hobby woodworker because it'll save your filters, right? Tell me about it. All right, so this is our low pro uh, dust separator. And so anytime you're using a dust collector or a shop vacuum, it can only move and pull as much air as can go through the filter. And so as your filter plugs up, which you kind of want it to do so the dust doesn't go back out in your air, right. you start losing airflow. And so the way to improve that is to separate your dust out before it gets into your shop vacuum or your, your dust collector. So uh, we just came out with this, uh, the Low Pro, and the benefit of it versus our traditional cyclones is it's just really small. Mm -hmm. And so it fits really well under a workbench in a small shop under your miter saw workstation and it keeps it out of the way. And you told me earlier that this will also fit on a regular Lowe's five gallon bucket. Yeah, yeah, you can, you know, Lowe's bucket. Um, you know, it's, the diameter is the same, and I'll just swap that for you here. There you go. Fits right on there. It's got a little gasket in there, I saw. Yeah. yeah. So for the separators to work uh, appropriately, the bucket has to be sealed. Yeah. That's really critical. So the gasket, uh, and you want to make sure it's latched really well, um, nice and tight. You don't want gaps because that'll cause the dust to go to your shop back right. instead of into the bucket. Nice. So where can they find these at should they want to buy one? 
Yeah, so the Low Pro is now in Lowe's stores. Um, so you can go to Lowe's.com or check your local Lowe's store, see if they carry it, and pick one up. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. All right, I'm here with Thomas from Wall Control. Thomas? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Tell us about what you got here. So this whole system is our new uh, workbench setup we got. It runs for about $2,000, and it comes assembled aside from this top half up here. Uh, this all condenses, and we throw it in there on a pallet. Oh, cool. So and this is a whole system you could buy? Yep. It doesn't come with any accessories, but we do have... Uh, this you, is, these are accessories? Yep, yep. And they attach with our patented system. Uh, requires two motions. You go up, down, and then it locks in locks place. Locks in place, so it's not gonna pull off yep. if you try and to if take it, something off of it. If it's a little loose, we have these uh, stabilizing tabs on the side, and you can tighten those, oh, cool. and it'll secure it better to the panel face. So what what's kind of the common accessories most people go for? Uh, this is pretty common. This is like our hammer holder. Yep. Unfortunately, we don't have a hammer with <laughs> us, but uh, screwdriver holder and these U-hooks, uh, they're pretty universal. Right. So these, Bigger tools and things. Yep. And there's no wrong way to store something. Right. Uh, you can, if you find a new way, bravo. You know, we, <laughs> we, pr we probably didn't think of that when yep. we made it. So it's really up to you what you do with your system. And I mean, we have People use it for tools, jewelry, yeah. uh, Legos, pretty much anything. Packing station. Yep, packing station. Uh, I see I'm, large hooks down there too. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's our heavy duty hook down there at the bottom, just for oversized things. Awesome, man. Well, Thomas, thank you. Of course. Pretty cool. All right, I'm here with Daniel and Diana who own Pwn CNC. They have some really cool products. We're here, we've got a ATCs, spindles, accessories, dust boots, all for your CNC machine. Um, so if you're interested in improving your experience, getting away from a palm router, those loud things, go to a spindle, which is super quiet. You can carve your wood. You can run for hours and hours and hours um, without having any problems. I run my CNC machine with a uh, spindle and I never use ear protection because um, it's nice and quiet. I can run, do other things and then come back to the machine and the job's done. Also, especially with our ATC system. So how did y'all start this company? So I started it out as a hobby business um, with my wife's support. <laughs> um, That's always important. Out of our house in 2019. Yep. So just before the pandemic and then after the pandemic started, um, it just kind of took it off really from there. It really grew. Um, we started uh, buying more 3D printers, mm -hmm. uh, putting more parts, more dust boots, um, Usually it was a result of what people requested that they wanted and that's what we would provide for them. So a lot of customization and that was how our dust boots were born. Can y'all show us some of your products? Sure. The main product that got us on the market is basically the V2. This is our dust boot. Um, the thing that made us popular on it is it's an under the gantry dust boot. So rather than your hose going right in the front of the, of the machine, right. the hose comes right behind the machine and your spindle comes down and cuts everything there. The great thing here is it's also for makers who want to film because then you just pop the front off, still carve, you get 80% efficiency yeah. and you get a beautiful carving cut. That's pretty cool. We, uh, this evolved, um, we're actually missing a piece here, but this evolved into the V3 and then we moved on. Uh, we designed several pieces from there, but this is the V9, also a uh, under the gantry dust boot for a four inch dust collection hose. That's awesome. So the same exact features, but for larger equipment. And of course we've got, uh, this is one for the traditional woodworker who wants to uh, have the hose in the front. Uh, basically each carb is unique. So depending on which carb you're doing, whether it's a 3D carb or a um, uh, just a flat 2D sign, um, you may need different types of boots. So that's why we've come up with different sizes to perfect um, and customize for each cut or each woodworker that has brought us these challenges. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You also offer some other stuff other than dust boots, right? We do. Um, our main premier product we just came out with on Black Friday is the ATC. Basically, with a uh, for those machines that can't support it, you push one button and the tool drops out, and you put a new one in, and now you've got a bit change. Yeah. Um, after that. If you've got a machine that supports it, like the Onefinity Elite or the uh, CNC for Newbies machine, um, you can actually wire in the ATC where the controller will say, hey, go pick up tool number two, 
run here, then go pick up tool number three and do that. And it's, it's all automatic. Yeah. And you just literally hit start, walk away, two, three tool changes later, you come back to a finished product. That's pretty cool. Is there anything else you want to tell us about? Um, well, much of our products line is uh, printed on 3D printers, um, which we've got two of the 3D printers back there. On um, any of our 3D printed products, we do sell the files. Oh, nice. So we, we, we used to give them away and everybody yeah. everybody kept saying, you need to sell these. Yeah. So we sell them for like a buck, a couple bucks, yeah. depending on, the, on how much engineering went into it. But you could buy the file and print it yourself. That's really cool. So things like clamps, um, low profile clamps. So you got your stock here, you got yeah. your wood or your clamp on there. The boots can hover over it. It's very low profile, so it doesn't interfere with any dust collection you've got. If your bit runs into the clamp and destroys the clamp, yeah. you just print another one. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Thank y'all, Dana. Mr. Dana. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm here with Mara with Sutherland. Sutherland Wells. Wells yes. It's a wood finish, right? We make polymerized tongue oil wood finishes. Nice. Can you show us what you got? I'm standing in front of um, our Murdoch's line, so some samples of our Murdoch's line, and our Murdoch's line contains our polymerized tongue oil with our uh, super durable, non-yellowing uralkid resin. So it's a polymerized tongue oil and resin blend product, um, which will allow you to get the, um, the look of a tongue oil finish with the durability of a resin. So we like to say it's a classic oil aesthetic for contemporary woodworkers. Yeah. <laughs> and so over here on the left, this is our hard sealer and hard oil combination. So two coats of hard sealer and then I think three coats of hard oil on top of it. Super. Sweet. And then on the right, we have our Murdox top coat. So it's two coats of hard sealer and our Murdox U500 top coat. Um, this is developed as a floor finish, but it's a great finish for um, tables kitchen countertops, bathrooms, anywhere where there's a, like, you need the durability of a really powerful resin. And then this is our original, while I'm here, this is our original tongue oil finish. It's our polymerized tongue oil and, um, and some solvents, some odor, mineral, uh, odorless mineral spirits. And it, um, it is a Green Guard certified product and it is also VOC exempt. Nice. So, and all of our products are VOC um, compliant. And you were telling me that you could scuff this finish. You don't have to sand it all the way back down. That's right. So once you apply any one of our finishes, as long as it's been applied, as long as it's been applied properly, yeah. it's going to wear. It's not going to fail. And when it comes time to recoat, you don't have to sand it back down to the bare wood. So you just scuff it and recoat it. Awesome. And so we do. So my husband Rob, who's how I got into this, um, he does historic preservation work. So in that world, it's a great finish because once you apply it you never have to disturb the original wood again. Oh, that is really good. Yeah. And you can coat over other finishes as well. Thank so, you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. I'm here with David from Gearhart Industries. He makes branding irons. You want to tell us what you make here? Yeah, man. Heated wood marking products. We call it a precision engineered pyrography. So we've got a variety of torch heated and electric products. Uh, the torch heated ones are heated up with a torch or any other kind of heat source that gets up to around 800 degrees. And the electric ones you just plug in. And we've got basic electric ones that are just straight up heated totally analog and then we have a digital one that uh, you set the temperature on and it'll hold that all day okay. so you can this one's a little better for doing leather and production work the, and, this uh, electric one is yeah the computer control one is yeah okay so a lot of my audience is woodworkers in their garage or shop making smaller items up to tables things like that which which model do you think works best for them well my personal favorite is a torch heated brass iron. Uh, I like the simplicity of it, and I prefer I prefer playing with fire every once in a while. It's just kind of <laughs> nice. Uh, but uh, for and it's also convenient if you're just doing marking one or two things. Yeah. If you're doing production runs, like if you got to make twenty or three hundred or something, then you need to go up to electric. We've actually got a drill press mounted. Uh, oh, sweet irons over there and you could just straight knock stuff out, Yeah. you know? And I know a lot of guys are thinking like, well, should I get a laser, should I get a branding iron? We feel like there's room for both. Right. You know, we've got a QR code branded on our tables yeah. up here. To laser several hundred of those would take forever. Right. But it's a few seconds per yeah. to use a branding iron. So there's advantages to right. it. Right. And they had just, his, the mark that a branding iron makes has a lot of character. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think a branding iron's a good choice for anybody looking to mark their work. Yeah. So if they wanted one, where these, where they go to get it? Gearhardindustry.com. It's industry with a Y. Okay. And uh, um, 
and you can just search for Gearheart Branding Iron and we'll pop up or yeah. ask anybody you know and they'll recommend <laughs> us. So. Awesome, Dave. Thank you, man. Absolutely, brother. Appreciate you. We're here with Skyler from Surf Prep. Skyler, thank you. Yeah, you bet, Matt. Can you tell us a little bit about what you got here? Absolutely. So um, it's uh, basically it's a sanding system that was originally developed for like large OEM manufacturing environments. Yeah. And what we're seeing today is a lot of non-vacuum environments are now going to dust extraction so that we can pull that dust up off the part we're sanding immediately at the point of contact. Okay. We've been honored and blessed over the last five, six years. We've won two different visionary awards nice. for um, innovation and productivity in sanding with the system. And we've had finishing departments, you know, for factories with as many as 600 employees or two, like a, a Taylor Guitar, yep. for instance, in San Diego. Um, not only do they have downdraft tables, but they also have in some of in some of these environments, they're now introducing the dust extraction so that they have a completely clean environment to where you don't even need to wear a dust mask. Nice. So my, my audience is majority garage beginner, oh, not beginner, but yeah. intermediate woodworkers who have their own little shop. Is this something to work for them? You know, absolutely. And it, it's kind of a, um, it's different than a DIY, you know, marketplace right. where um, a lot of people are used to seeing like a shop vac or they're seeing um, a sander that's a taller sander. Right. You know, it sits kind up like the, higher. Like the DeWalt brands and yeah. big box store and, brands. And, there's, and make no mistake, there's no, um, that doesn't mean those are bad right. products or bad companies. It's just that we designed our tools to be very low profile so that the closer I can get your hand to the product you're sanding, the more control you have and the better sanding action you have. Awesome. These are also brushless. Oh, cool. So there's no brushes to fail. And so we get longevity. We get a lot of life out of these. And when people pick it up and they run it, it's kind of funny. You see those eyes on there? Yeah. So somebody eyes. came by and put these little button eyes on here. Yeah. <clears throat> and normally you want to see those things bounce around yeah. and shake. And when you run our sander, they don't shake. Let's give it a try. Because it's so... So you're looking at those little black dots. Yeah. So typically they would be bouncing all around right. in there and the tool is so smooth yeah. and well balanced that it doesn't do that. I also notice that the dust extractor is very quiet. Very. Oh wow. Yeah. There's like no vibration there. That's yeah. Cool. It's so applicable to the person in their garage. Right. We're getting reports back where uh, people that have had um, uh, nerve issues, yeah. they're dealing with MS, whatever it is. Yeah. We have women today that are able to refinish furniture in their garages with the implementation implementation of this tool and they're not getting the, the pain that they once oh, had wow. in their hands, wrists, forearm. Yeah, yeah, it's That's pretty, pretty cool. amazing. So you also have a, a regular orbital sander, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's round yeah. and that has a loping action to it and it's mostly designed for large flat areas. So like tabletops, cutting yeah. boards. <clears throat> this tool here in its air version, yep. Matt, years ago was actually divine, uh, designed for Toyota. Really? For all of the um, the door jams. Yeah. And um, you would never think that you would take a rectangular tool into um, a round area. Yeah. or we're, But we're sanding spindles on chairs, stretches, bun feet it's yeah. just amazing so y'all have a bunch of different interface pads. a lot of different um these are different uh foam abrasives yeah and um it's a half inch a 10 millimeter a five millimeter but this here wad that up in your hand <clears throat> make it disappear so you have abrasive grain on there you see how that pops out of your hand yeah. so the flexibility there um allows someone to drop the tool kind of like in that image behind us the, the foam takes the shape of the product that we're um, prepping. Yeah. So there's, um, there's a lot of, uh, I can turn this into a level sander too. Oh, really? I can shave down and I can change the shape of uh, different substrates also. Nice. And you, of course you have your own abrasives line of yep. discs for your sanders and all that. Yep. Yeah, and they, um, they also fit all the other sanders. Oh, nice. So if you've got a three by five big, uh, big rectangular sander, we've got pads that fit that. So we're making them uh, for just about everyone. We're right now, we're making our way through um, Benjamin Moore stores across oh, nice. North America. Yeah. So, so if someone wants to buy your surf prep yeah. sanders, where do they go? You know what? I would say um, um, look for a Ben Moore store local in your area. And if, they're, and if uh, surf prep's not yet in there, then um, come to us direct online. 
Perfect. And um, we have a chat. Uh, we have people that handle our chat feature, and uh, we're known for service. Awesome. You know. Yeah. So yeah, it's honored. Uh, it's an honor to be uh, chatting with you guys yeah, and to be a part of uh, you know what you have going on. Yeah. And uh, our big thing is we're just trying to help as many people as we can get through the work that they're doing. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right on. Yeah, you bet. I'm here with Nick from ShotSmith. Uh, you may have heard of ShotSmith Tools, but he just bought this company about six months ago, right? Yeah, yeah, six months ago. We're nice. a 70-year-old brand. <laughs> so can you tell me about your products? Yeah, so I bought it because I see this opportunity. We're a 70-year-old brand. Not much has changed over 70 years. We have made a lot of improvements, but it's seven tools in one. The biggest barrier to entry into woodworking is space. This is a table saw, a lathe, a drill press. It's also a disc sander, a, a shaper, a router, and a horizontal borer. We also make attachments that fit on it. You can see this one here. This is our belt sander. Oh, nice. And then we have our band saw and jointer here. Oh, so really? it's 11 tools in one that fit in this space. Yeah, that takes up what, six feet by? Not even. Really? Yeah, five and a half feet by two feet. All right, so I've seen shop smiths on the internet before, but. Yeah. When I walked in, the first thing I noticed, you have a digital screen, so that's something different, something yes. that's new. So what we've also done is taken the guesswork out of using the machine. So on the home screen, it'll have all the, all the features that you'd want. So it's like if you're using a table saw, you hit the table saw button, and then you'll say, am I using, what blade am I using? Am I using hardwood or softwood? What kind of sawing am I doing? And when you press go, the motor calibrates to the right RPM for you for that function. And the same is true for all 11 functions we have. So there's just Prop the question. So if you do that for say hardwoods or something, and it's cut, it knows the blade, it knows the speed, so it's going to reduce burning, better cuts, yep. cleaner yep. cuts. It's also a smart motor, so all the electricity here is 110. Um, so it's a, a quarter, a three, a one and three quarter horse motor. Um, and so if you're heavy ripping, it's going to feel like it's it's dragging on the engine, but that's doing it intentionally to save electricity. If you run a 220 line, which this can convert to, it's a two horsepower motor, oh, okay. and you can rip through boards really fast. Nice. So can you show me how this thing works? How you adjust everything? Yeah, I'll turn it into a table saw. Okay. First, you raise the table up. So what's great is you only need one tool to do everything. So you have a disc sander on here now. Disc sander here. So it won't, it won't actually be very hard to change this out to a table saw. Yeah. So you take the disc off, put the saw blade on, Line those up. You want this tip back just a little bit so the table catches it. Okay. Get everything tight. Slide this back over. There we go. And it comes right up. There's the there's the saw. Saw guards in place. Now you got a table saw. And that's our fence, yeah. Now you have other tables we can add to this, extension tables to make it a, a more robust platform. Yeah. But then I like you, the height of it. Like it yeah. feels like a, a better height. A lot of your job site saws are really low. Right. Yeah. And so then what we've done here is taken the guesswork out. So if you come over here, you can see it's like, all right, we're gonna use table saw. So you hit table saw and they say, okay, we got a 10 inch blade on there. We're gonna be doing some hardwood cutting. We're gonna call it general sawing. It's gonna program at 3,400 RPMs, and you would hit go, and it goes. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so we're taking all the guesswork out of everything. You also sell dust collector to go with it? We do, and what's great about it, it's as loud as it is. That's quiet. Yeah. That's quiet, that's six, impressive. Six, 600 cubic, one and a half horse. One and a half horse. So yeah, it's uh, hooks to all these machines, and we've been doing some heavy yeah. heavy sand in here, so you can't suck it all up, yep. but, you know. Uh, tell me about your uh, the way it's drill press conversion there. Yeah, so this will, um, so we'll go from here and you just, you basically, you remove all the stuff and you tip it up. You turn the table 180 degrees, so now it's up here. And it can flip up the other way too. So you can drill sideways into something? No, so the motor can be underneath. Oh. And oh. you can do routing. Oh, cool. So this goes up to 10,000 RPMs. Oh, wow. So it goes from 250 RPMs to 10,000. So that's pretty cool. It, that's why we can do seven tools, yeah. right? And again, it's all programmed, so whatever you're doing, so in this, kind of, we're, we're drilling holes for our tea light here and it's got all the same you know set stops depth stops and all that so yeah. it's this is called the mark 7 you said yeah and so, so if you went just where would you order this from shop right Smith? off our website shopsmith.com yep and you get the whole setup get the whole setup with seven tools and then you can add 
these attachments. So the, the belt sander, the band saw, the jointer, we make a strip sander too. Okay. So you can go to 11 tools and then our other standalone, the, the dust collector. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. If you like this video, check out the conference I went to in Vegas right there. Click the box to get you the big old virtual fist bump.